Hello again, everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a basic virtual environment with binaural 3D sound in Unity. So first, I will show you how to add audio sources in the virtual scene. Then I will say a few words about how to access and modify audio. And then the second part will be dedicated to setting up binaural spatialization. And at the end, I will show you how you can use machine learning model to process audio in Unity. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so the first step is to open our project in Unity. And Unity is a very popular program for creating uh, games and virtual environments. And it also has uh, many different options for audio processing. So now a crash course on Unity Editor. Here in the middle, you can see a 3D scene we are working on with all the objects that we placed in the scene. These objects are also listed here in the scene hierarchy window. So in this super simple scene, we can only see a few objects. Uh, for example, main camera and directional light are placed there by default. But I also added a plane and a sphere. So as you can see, these objects can be selected and each of them can have its specific properties, which we can inspect here in the inspector window on the right side. So for example, now that, uh, that the sphere is selected, we can uh, modify its properties by um, changing the parameters in the inspector. And Unity projects usually come in the form of a folder with many different subfolders. And here in the project window, uh, we can see uh, all the different subfolders of our project that we are currently working on. And last but not least, we also have a console where all the error messages and debugging messages will be printed. So now let's go straight to adding sound into our scene. To do that, we have to click one of the objects in the hierarchy and we can uh, go to the inspector and say add component and we can choose audio source component from, from the list. Next, we have to pick a sound file that we want for our sound source and we are almost done. What we still need is the audio listener. Audio listener is a component, another component which is responsible for mixing all the audio sources in the scene and sending the audio to our playback device. And by default, it is placed on the main camera. So having several audio sources and audio listener, uh, we can uh, already uh, listen to, to the sound in the scene. And we can do that by playing pressing play button here, which by the way, takes us to the play mode in which we can test our game. I, I don't care about anything. I don't care about anything. Okay, so now that we have sound uh, in our scene, let's start talking about how we can modify the sound. And one, uh, the most obvious way is to use uh, the parameters uh, that are here in this user interface, but this is not very interactive. To, so let's um, try to do something a bit more fun and modify our audio with a script. And even if you don't know much about programming at this basic level, it is it is very easy. So we just have to go to to the project and to the place where we want to create our scripts. And for me, it's a folder with all the scripts that I have. And here we can say create a new C sharp script, which we will call probably something like uh, modify sound. The last thing we have to do is to uh, attach this modify script into our audio source. And now when we double click on this script, our text editor will open. Okay, so by default, Unity will create a script with these two functions, start and update, which are probably the most used of all Unity event functions. And the start function is executed only once. So here there's a place to initialize the game and set all the parameters. The update function, on the other hand, will be executed every frame. So for example, let's say uh, we want to create a 
very simple option that every time we click the left mouse button the volume of the sound will go up and every time we will click the right mouse button the volume will go down so let's try this so before the start function we have to define all the variables which we will use in the script and here it is very easy because we only need one variable uh, and it will be the source and let's call it audio source okay then in the start function uh, we have to initialize our audio source and to do that we need to find the audio source component that is attached to the same object as the script is attached to so to do that we can say uh, get component and then audio source okay and then in the update function we'll, we will be checking if left or right mouse button was clicked so to do that we need two if statements and get mouse button down it's this one and zero here stands for the left mouse button and one for the right mouse button so now we have two if statements one referring to left click and one referring to right click so the last thing we will have to do is to increase the volume or decrease the volume of our source so let's say the volume is increased by 0 0.1 yeah. and let's copy copy this line here and the only difference will be that the volume will be decreased okay and that should work already I I don't care about anything I don't care about anything at all Cause you you were my head. Okay and it is also possible to create multiple scripts and attach them to our audio source So for example uh, I created uh, before a script uh, that will move our object uh, on a circle. I, I, don't care about I also have another uh, script which will change the pitch of the audio source depending on its position. And so now we have more scripts and they will work together. I I don't care about anything, I don't care about anything Cause you, you were my everything Okay, so you get the idea And this way of accessing audio through Unity Scripting API, which I showed you Is very easy to use And also Unity gives us a lot of nice very nice documentation with examples where we can check all different things that we can do uh, with an audio source so unity scripting is a perfect starter kit for audio processing but if you are interested in more advanced ways to process audio in unity i prepared this list of important keywords that you should definitely check and I will also send a link of another presentation I did uh, about that topic. Now it's time for the second part of this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to set up 3D binaural sound. So now we are in this new scene and so far the only difference is that now we have four sound sources instead of one and I also added more surfaces and now imagine that uh, we want to create an environment where we are uh, placed in the middle of these sound sources and we can hear each sound source coming from a different direction. Basic spatial audio functionality can be activated simply by um, setting the spatial blend parameter to 1. This will make Unity adjust the level of the audio source and simple stereo panning according to the relative position between the source and the listener. And this might be enough in many cases, but if we want a more precise binaural spatialization, which is based on the properties of a real human ear, we will need to download a spatializer plugin. And there are many different available spatializer plugins, 
but the one that I find particularly convenient to use is the Steam Audio Spatializer. This plugin can be downloaded from the Steam Audio website and once this is done, we have to go to the Unity Audio Project settings and here in under Spatializer plugin, we can choose the Steam Audio Spatializer and the same we can choose for the Ambisonics Decoder plugin. After we choose the Spatializer plugin, a new toggle will appear in each audio source here we can decide if we want to spatialize the sound source or not. Every spatializer plugin has its own way of setting the parameters of spatialization. For Steam Audio, we have the possibility to attach the Steam Audio source component on every audio source in the Steam. And here we can see a number of parameters which can be adjusted. They include HRTF interpolation, distance attenuation and air absorption, directivity settings, occlusion, reflections, and so on. The surfaces in the scene can be used to compute how geometry will influence the reflection, reverberation, and occlusion. To do that, we have to tag each of the surface with a Steam Audio Geometry script. And then we can go to Steam Audio setting and say export active scene. We can also specify which material we want for each surface. And to be able to demonstrate the spatial audio, I added two more scripts. The first one is attached to the main camera and it will be responsible for moving the player while using arrow keys. And the second one is attached to all sound sources in the scene and it will allow to switch on and off the sound source by clicking on it. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. I hope it was clear for you that the sound depends on the position uh, of the listener in the scene. And the reason why the directional sound is so realistic is that the Spatializer plugin uses the HRTF database, which I mentioned before in my presentation. And what is very nice about the Steam Audio plugin is that we can change the HRTF database to a custom one, for example, one that we recorded. All we have to do is to put our HRTF database, which is usually stored in the sofa fo format, in the streaming assets folder. So here I have several ones. And in fact, one of them is the HRTF database that we recorded at Eurocat for ear with a hearing aid on. So now, when I play the scene again, we will be able to change the HRTF database in the play mode. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con...
So unfortunately, we don't have unlimited time today. So this basic setup for binaural audio uh, in Unity is all I can share with you today. But uh, you should know that Steam Audio and other Spatializer plugins allow usually for many more functionalities like adding room geometry and simulating how the sound reflects from the surfaces, also modeling occlusion by solid objects placed in the room. Sometimes we can add material properties or spatialized sources added in ambisonics format. So if you are interested in this, you should definitely try to dig a little bit deeper. And I think a nice place to start is the um, documentation of Steam Audio because it's uh, very straightforward to set it up in Unity. And from there, you can, uh, you can experiment on your own. In this last part of the tutorial, I want to show you a simple way to employ machine learning in our Unity project. So even if you don't know much about machine learning, you probably understand the concept of uh, using data to train a machine. So there is some algorithm which processes hundreds of hours of annotated data or audio data. And after a while, it starts to understand the relation between the audio properties and the annotations. And at some point of this training process, this knowledge can be frozen in the form of a pre-trained model, which is basically a file containing a bunch of numbers, also called weights. And it is a common practice to, for machine learning engineers to publish this file along with their code and it can be downloaded. And there is a super useful Unity package called Barracuda, which allows us to import and use such pre-trained models inside the virtual scene. And today I will demonstrate a model which performs sound classification called YAMnet. So given snippets of audio features, it tells us whether it's silence, speech or vehicle noise or any of other 521 classes. Okay, so I downloaded this YAMnet model and I have it in the, my resources folder here in the project. And it has to be in the ONNX format. Now here we can see some useful information about the model. For example, we can see what it expects as the input, what it gives at the output, and also we can see the details of the architecture. Here, it's a convolutional neural net. So this model at the input, it expects uh, logma spectrograms of size 96 by 64. So we have 96 time frames and 64 male frequency channels. And at the output, we get a tensor of size 521, which corresponds to 521 classes. And we get the weights that corresponds to the likelihood of each class. So this scene is almost the same as the previous one. The only new thing is a new script, which I added on each audio source component. And it's called classify sound source. We can see that this script has some public properties, which can be chosen here from the inspector. So first thing we have to specify is which uh, machine lear learning model we will use and of course we'll, we will use this YAMnet model for all the sources and the second thing here is the canvas where our results will be printed that's why here on the left side I also have four more canvases for each source to to print the results so the main structure of this script is almost the same as in the previous simple example we have variable definitions here, then we have a start function and then we have an update function. And here we also have a few more functions just to organize the code a little bit. First, we can see the public variables which were accessible from the inspector window, here canvas um, model. We also have other variables related to machine learning model and variables related to the feature extraction stage. And we also need a few more parameters to define how the sound will be processed. 
and in the start function i initialized all these variables and here you can see i am printing some information so we have sampling rate uh, then we have the length of the audio buffer will which will be captured uh, every second and it is 160 samples which which is one second of audio in this case and then in this code we will divide this buffer into a number of overlapping mini frames and for each of them we will compute log mail spectrum so that's what i call a mini frame length here and it is 400 samples which corresponds to 25 milliseconds we also have hop size which tells us the amount of overlap between the mini frames so based on that we can compute the number of overlapping frames for each processing step and it has to be at least 96 frames so that we have enough data to send to our model which expects 96 frames of 64 male frequency bands and these next two lines are important because this is how we set up the option to use a machine learning model inside this code so we only have two lines first we load our model which we want to use and next we define the worker which is our inference engine we also have to load a CSV file which contains information about all the classes and then we can move on into the update function. In the update function we will process audio every second. So first we need to check if one second has passed already. Then we get one second of audio and store it in this audio buffer that I told you about before. And this while loop divides the audio buffer into overlapping frames and for each frame it computes the log mail spectrogram transform. So we were putting this log mail spectrogram frames into variable called mail spec buffer and since it might be longer than the required 96 uh, frames we have to cut out the desired size from log spec buffer and then the last thing before employing machine learning is to transform this load array into a tensor with a desired shape of 96 times 64 because this is the format that is expected at the input by our model. And then with this single line we can already execute the machine learning inference. So we will get the output tensor which we will transform again back to a float array and then we can already use this array to show the predictions of the model and this is what is done in these next few lines i am using this function find free hires to find three classes that uh, obtain the highest likelihood and then based on that i'm constructing a message which I'm printing in the canvas. Okay, so now we can see if that works. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes. So you could see that the YAMNET model was maybe not perfect, but it was more or less right about the class of each audio source. And it's quite nice given that the model was trained on audio data from YouTube and here we have some arbitrary sound files. And before the end, I wanted to show you one more interesting option because we can perform the exact same computation on the signal captured by the listener. So after the spatialization and after the sources are mixed into left and right channel. Since now the signal that we will process will contain the mixture of all the sources, it will be more challenging for the classifier to assign the correct class. So let's check.
No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. No rompas la nuez con los dientes o las muelas. I hope you liked this example and if you want to know more about Barracuda and about using machine learning in Unity, you can go to this website and check the manual and they also have a lot of useful examples. I would also like to acknowledge this uh, repository which helped me a lot to prepare this tutorial. Uh, specifically, it contained the implementation of uh, Logmail spectrogram in C Sharp which uh, which is great. So if you want, you can check this repository and also give it some stars. So we reached the end of this tutorial and I hope you had a little bit of fun and that you learned something and see you back in the webinar.